Next up, we have Mira Kumar. Okay, can you see? Yes, and I'll make sure I tell you ladies that and you are going into presentation mode. You're ready to go, Mira. Yes, okay. So for my project, I titled it Project Kindness and it's focused on empathy. And uh, my project mentor was Lauren Harrington. There we go, okay. So for my self-reflection, at the beginning, we did take the Berkman assessment and a lot of the, the information that I received back was stuff that I already knew about myself, but it like further confirmed it, which was really interesting. Um, so I am a communicator and I like to talk to people and I'm a people's person. And um, when it comes to, you know, making change, I like to see how I have um, impacted people directly and, you know, like see the change that I made. Um, and then something I learned throughout our entire program is um, making differences that you have strengths, not weaknesses, and being viewed and like having different, um, being different from everyone else has like been something that I've struggled with for my entire life. But throughout this program, I've kind of realized that you need to like view those things as in a positive light and view them as things that make you different and stand out versus things that make you not fit in. Um, and then through the Athena leadership skills, I was able to learn a lot about like different leadership techniques and things that you can apply to all types of situations. And one thing that I found actually really interesting was um, while going through these skills, um, they just seem like, you know, like things in a book that you note down. But whenever I was able to talk to all of my mentors, they all mentioned all of the skills and they were all brought up in conversation. So I thought it was really interesting to see how these skills could actually be like integrated into the workplace and real life situations. Um, and then another thing I got from my Berkman assessment was how to deal with conflict and for me, that um, means addressing the situation head on and not really like working around it and just like getting it out of the way, which is something that is super important to how I am able to solve problems. So live authentically. So this was the principle that I chose to focus on and it means embracing your actions and living true to your core beliefs and moral values. And that's something that I've kind of struggled with um, just because I think about think a lot about how other people perceive me, but um, moving forward, I'd like to try to you know like be grounded in my morals. And I've realized that as long as you yourself are happy with the decisions you make and they stick to what you believe in, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Um, and also knowing that if you do make a bad decision or something that does go against your morals, knowing that though that decision didn't don't doesn't change how you truly believe. And, you know, always just going back to it and sticking to it no matter what. Mentor reflection. Okay, so my first mentor that I met with was Haley Daniels. And we, she is the technology CAO at um, BNY Mellon. And my big takeaway from this was that in the future, you should be flexible with your plans. Um, I have never really wanted to know what I what to do with my life. So that was like a big question I had going into this whole entire experience. And something that she really taught me was how um, you can have a basic plan for your life set out, but things are gonna change and it's okay that things change and you need to adapt to them and become flexible and that's okay. And it's all gonna like turn out all right in the end. Um, and that was something that like really impacted me because not knowing what I wanted to do, I've always been really scared for the future and just like having some reassurance that if things change along the way, like it's okay. That was like really nice. Um, my next mentors that I met with were Ingrid Cook, who is the CEO of Zoom. And my big takeaway from that one was develop your own leadership style that works best for how you communicate personally. And in that session, I actually was able to speak with both Ingrid and Linda Knight. And um, they both have very different leadership styles, um, which I found was really interesting, but they both work for them as individuals. So a big takeaway from that for me was finding what works for you and sticking to that. Um, and then talking to Linda as well, um, who is the IT manager at FedEx, 
Um, another one of my takeaways was staying loyal to um, your relationships that you build in the workplace. Um, another commonality between Linda and Ingrid was that they both had worked at the same company for um, many, many years. So just like building those relationships is really, really important. Um, and then my last two mentors were Bhavni Patel, who is the CEO of Beam Data. And the big takeaway I got from that was also um, like in exploring your career paths is using your younger years as a chance to um, take a lot of opportunities and also like on along the way, self-reflect and see what you're interested in and what you're passionate about and um, build off of that. And I was also able to meet with Oh, wait, I think it glitched out. That was supposed to say, um, but Lauren Harrington, who is my project mentor, and my big takeaway from that is to maintain a work-life balance and be grateful for everything that you have and take everything day by day. Um, okay, so I advocate for making our society a kinder and more welcoming environment just because that's something that we can always continue to improve upon. And I think that it's a big issue that we're faced with today. So the problem that I was specifically addressing through my like solution and project was how insensitivity um, is something that is never really addressed because emotional intelligence is something that's expected and not explicitly talked about in school. Um, I know that throughout like later middle school and early high school, some people, there are a lot of comments made that are very insensitive. Um, and are said without really thinking. And I think incorporating this, uh, incorporating some sort of empathy and sensitivity training or seminars into like a younger grade school age could be really helpful in preventing this, these situations from even happening in the future. So my main project goals were um, to have students know what to do when they're, they are presented with an uncomfortable situation. Um, so knowing like, if you, if someone is, if someone said something to you, what you can do, or if you're witnessing something as a bystander, um, what you can do. And then also to prevent those situ situations from happening in the first place and develop an environment where everyone is treated with kindness and respect. And, you know, everyone's emotions are considered and no one is overlooked. Wait, is it? There we go. Okay, um, branding and marketing of my project. So my plan for branding um, my project is to start within just my school and grow the project and, you know, work on developing it even further. And then after that, email other schools and, you know, work on branching out through that aspect. Also using the resources I have through my school and things like that to work on expanding this project. So my condens really condensed plan of action is to first develop a seminar, the seminar content and, you know, like what I'd be saying throughout all of this. Um, just because since it's for a younger audience, having activities and like videos and things that are very interactive just to keep everyone engaged because that is a problem, um, especially since I want to like present this to um, kids um, and then stay in contact with my school um, just to make sure that by the time I have this project developed, I am ready to present it. Um, host the first seminar and then receive feedback and hear back from the students and what they thought about it, um, which is really important to see how I can improve it for the next time. Um, and then like spend a lot of time, you know, changing the content based on that feedback and really like addressing it and any questions or concerns they have really answering that so that for the next time um, we can work on com continuing to improve it. Um, and then expanding to others and reaching out to other schools. Um, so expand others to help, that would be like using some of my other resources like people that work with kids or people that you know talk about empathy and things like that and seeing how they think that I could um, use some of that information and like change it so that it's more suitable for um, a younger audience. And then reaching out to other schools is again, like in the end, expanding this project and um, really making it a lot bigger. So going to other schools and bringing it there. Integrating technology. So for my project, 
um, something that would be really important, again, is networking and staying connected to so many people and other schools and everyone that could help build this project. Um, and then another thing would be like starting a social media page to gain more attention because that's a good way to attract a lot of um, a lot more a larger audience so that you know they could see like what's going on with this project and like how they can get involved too. And then for the actual presentation itself, using different techno technological medias like videos and slide presentations and things like that, um, just because again it is for um, younger kids so like staying, keeping them engaged through interactive activities and things like that is something that's super important. Uh, so resources. So for the people involved, um, definitely reaching out to all of my mentors that I've been able to meet through launch and um, using those contacts to continue to grow um, my plan and what I have so far. And then school administration and teachers, I feel like teachers um, could provide a lot of good feedback, especially since they work with kids on a day to day basis. Um, on like what they'd be receptive to and things like that and then school administration, maybe also incorporating this into the actual curriculum itself. Um, and then community leaders, so I know that I talked about this um, with Lauren but for in there are some colleges in the Pittsburgh area which already incorporate bystander training and a lot of companies do it too so like reaching out to those types of people and seeing if there's a way that I could kind of develop what they have and change it so that I could use it um use like part bits and pieces of that in my own presentation so this is kind of like a rough timeline for like the next year and then like long term um, so January to April, uh, definitely working on creating this presentation and this project and compiling all of the resources and videos and things. And then May to June uh, would be around hosting the first presentation and receiving feedback. Um, so I could see like how the students and teachers and everyone responded to it. And then July to October and like towards the end of the year, improving the content um, based on like how the last seminar went and adapting it to the changes um, that we received in the feedback. And um, towards the end of the year, maybe hosting another one at like the beginning of the new school year. And long term would be hosting more um, presentations like throughout the year and bringing it outside of just my school district. So measuring success. Um, that would be for me for this project would be from the feedback that we receive. Um, so through like a survey of the students or the survey of the teachers seeing what they absorbed from it and how helpful they found it and then also takeaways. So what did they um, what really resonated with them and that that we could like incorporate more of and making sure that at the end of the day, they at least learned something from this presentation that could possibly affect how they treat others in the future. Um, and then for my hashtag, it would be hashtag project kindness, which is like, I thought that it was like little and cute and um, it's something easy to remember. And then my quote was do things for people, not because of who they are or what they do in return, but because of who you are. And that's by Harold Kushner. And it kind of reminded me back to the um, to the living authentically part of all of this, and you know, at the end of the day, we need to do kind things, not for how others will respond to it, but how it makes us feel and how it impacts us. So that's all for my project. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> well done, Mira. Excellent job. Lauren, do you have any final words for Mira? And just a note to everyone, Mira actually took over an entire session of launch and came in as moderator and did an excellent job as well. So superstar. Lauren. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of speechless how she pulled everything together. You know, at first when Mira shared what she was passionate about and where she, her purpose like led her. Um, I thought, oh my gosh, this is, this, this is so relevant because this is something we're doing in corporate America, right? And I know universities are, are talking about empathy and, and how do we 
how do we teach the bystander training and, and be, you know, be kind to each other. It never occurred to me to really, you know, look even a little bit at, at grade school and high school, you know, I, and I thought, Mira, this is, this is just brilliant. So the way she pulled it all together and, and her idea, I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see how it develops. So it was really wonderful. And, and your, your presentation and your calm delivery and the way you talk about it, it, it was really wonderful, wonderful, effective communicator. So very, very proud. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren, and great job, Mira. Girls, those of you that already presented, there are comments and resources for you in chat, so make sure you do check those out.